TRS Clips, the place you arrive at if you just want the best bits of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. Subscribe, hit that bell icon. Uh, I felt sorry, Cho Yi Yun on her kiss with Lomon being shot 17 times. Again, reported on my news app. It's from that new zombie show on Netflix. It's called mm. All of Us Are Dead. Yeah. So many people bring it up in conversation generally. What's the deal with Korean cinema and TV shows and why should one watch them? Miss Shanoi, you have a minute. Please go for it. I mean, you should watch it if you're interested in it and you're want you're like okay reading subtitles. Personally, uh, like I've found that Korean shows tend to take like a slightly more romantic angle. But honestly, I've not watched enough of them to know that like whether um you should write off the genre because of it. It's just that like because they tend to take a slightly more romance based angle on everything, I I get impatient and it's like chalo 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 move on. What else you got, you know? But that being said, uh, I really liked uh, All of Us Are Dead. That was a fun show. Um. Because like, you know, I, I'm actually a huge zombie nut. Like uh, that's yeah. like my favorite. That Train to Busan is a good movie. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. So this is like Train to Busan kind of zombies. Uh, but and but this show is actually very hard hitting in terms of like the human relationships. Like the zombies are like whatever tertiary to the plot. They're there and they're the basic catalyst. But beyond that, uh, the show in itself is like it's about the interpersonal relationships between the characters about like how a situation can turn someone who seems normal into a complete monster very lord of the flies kind of like Mm. vibes you know Mm. like um it's like you know you there are people that you naturally hate but they are the ones who end up coming out on top then there are people that you're rooting for but they just like die then there are people who like betray each other whatever right so like i think they've done the human relationships of the show like well uh, so much so that like you can like it forego the culture. yeah it trans like that was the case with Squid Games yeah. right the story was like so universal right like that it completely transcended culture it did not matter what language they were speaking in you know that is the case with Black Mirror as well actually yeah. in its core every episode is some about one emotion like, yeah and then it's packaged with this whole future tech dark angle but it's actually about one one emotion I mean Black Mirror is anyway now like a reality right like um. Mm with the neural link that Elon Musk has made. It's mm. basically that uh, episode of yeah. Black Mirror, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, the yeah. story of us, mm. that last one. What do you have to say about Korean <coughs> cultural influences? So I have literally only watched Squid Game and... <laughs> and Parasite? But yeah, Parasite was like solid. So I think, it's, yeah, it's, it's a lot about the way they like, you know, narrate these like sort of specific emotions. Like even with Parasite, it was... Like, it's very normal across, like, countries and, you know, nationalities. This whole big divide with the ultra-rich and the, like, extremely poor, right? And just the treatment of it. Just that one scene where, you know, the uh, the rich lady is like, you know, fuck, what's smelling in this car? And that's mm. that sort of brings out an emotion uh, that, dude, what the f***? Like, he's just a human. Like, treat people, treat them like humans, not like worms. Just the fact that, you know, um, these guys are hiding downstairs, like, you know, in, in inside this massive mansion of theirs, just sort of like shows the different kinds of lives that people are living. With Squid <laughs> Games, uh, it was very similar that, you know, best friends could possibly end up being enemies purely because of the survival of the fittest mm. mentality. Mm. Like, it's like pitting people against each other. There's no money. Like, yeah, it's it's money. Like, mm. it's it's... How did you feel when you were watching Parasite? I was uh, I was damn engrossed in the filmmaking of it. Keep this is a fucking amazing film. What amazing frames? What amazing storytelling? And I think the director, specifically of Parasite, he is very renowned in Korea for sort of being a Nolan type director who makes movies in a flow. Hmm. Like you can watch the whole movie in one go and you won't know time has passed. Yeah. Mo- Nolan does a lot of these moving shots. Hmm. Apparently, even this guy does a lot of play with moving shots and music. Hmm. And you you you'll feel that the second time, third time you watch Parasite. I just felt like this could easily have been an Indian story also. Yeah, Mm. so Parasite actually made me very uncomfortable. Like in the sense that it's a great movie and it's not one of those movies where you feel uncomfortable that it doesn't have rewatch value. So Clockwork Orange was that movie for me where it was a good movie to watch the one time but shit, I was so uncomfortable. I I can't watch that movie again and it's been like 10 years since I've seen it. So, uh, but like with Parasite, there were portions when I was distinctly so uncomfortable. So like, you know that scene that you're talking about where she can smell him, right? 
Yeah. So you know there's that co- entire co- and like I'm very fascinated by like conversation and Ranveer likes to say that I'm very obsessed with words mm-hmm. but like I I really like well written conversation right. and like there's that uh, there's this interplay that happens in that car where he's uh, driving having uh, his house has drowned literally yeah. the day before and she's just like wow I'm so happy it's rain the sky <laughs> has cleared up like so much and you know that is such a natural kind of conversation to yeah. have that you don't think about it twice but you don't realize that like on the other end and like and for people her, are actually losing their people homes. are losing their homes people are losing their livelihood and that is honestly what made me like really uncomfortable because yeah. like i saw myself yes. in that rich wali auntie yes. so yeah. i was just like oh shit like what am i doing like you know in my life that like yeah. to the people who are like working for me so like parasite actually really made me uncomfortable but it was like an entertaining movie yeah, like i loved yeah. it mm. like frame for frame like i was yeah. hooked Hmm. You know the one thing with uh, Koreans generally, with what I've figured after working with a few of them, is that they're very capitalistic. Hmm. And whenever they build anything, it could be a film, it could be a product. They're thinking of the world as their market. Hmm. Therefore, they will like twist and turn their product or film to suit the world, and that's what's really worked for them. Hmm. I think really, don't you think it it would be the other way around where they're just making their own thing and people are ending up relating to it? I think that's more the Japanese because the Japanese are doing things for the Japanese. The Japanese don't right. care about like what Americans have to say about right. them and what who which audience in India likes them. But the Koreans, dude, look at how much promotion the Korean properties are getting here. Like and also, I think smart on the on the Squid Game producers to include an Indian or Pakistani character. Yeah, that. probably. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, I'm sure someone's studying some data and some numbers saying, "Oh, we yeah. get a lot of viewers from India." Yeah. So let's put a brown person in it. Also, that uh, the Korean push is not only happening in terms of like uh, content that's going out. The Korean push is happening on all fronts. So K-pop because also, yeah. No, no, like not just entertainment, right? Like right. so, it's happening in food also. So like uh, right. because I work in the food industry, like I'm seeing the sudden influx of like Korean recipes. Like the Korean right. consulate was at one point sponsoring, like uh, doing a we lot of paid. We worked with them. We worked with them. Doing a lot of paid influencers. Correct. Yeah. So they were also reaching out to people because they want to get that kind of Gen Z. market and the gen z market is very into this korean yeah, culture yeah, like we obviously because we grew up primarily with like american pop culture when we were growing up we watched like all the looney tunes cartoons and warner brothers and whatever right so then our leaning is more naturally towards the west in terms of the content that we now consume but like all of these kids they've kind of grown up with this content having an even like scale in terms of where it can be like watched right so i feel like a lot of like every gen z person that i have met these days through my job whatever someone somewhere is into some kind of like korean, korean culture vibe. japanese culture something from the east and mm-hmm. the japanese culture was obviously there even when we were young but like it wasn't that it mainstream. wasn't mainstream there's a channel called animax correct that was about it Correct, and now it's just like it's completely mainstream, right? Mm. To like enjoy anime and all. Now it comes up in yeah. conversation. Like you go to a party and someone goes like, "What anime are you watching?" And I'm like, "Now this is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. one more thing I have to yeah. watch." <laughs> yeah, that I know this anime conversation. We have someone called Sarvan Banja who's a massive anime <laughs> fan. But uh, I think Korea is the third largest or fourth largest GDP in the world. And I'll tell you a fascinating thing about Korea. When we worked with some people from this big Korean brand, we were working with. Um, I, I had like deep conversation with some of them, and I asked them that how were your parents' childhoods, hmm. and they said that there was nothing. They grew up in villages. Hmm. I believe Korea got its independence around the time India got it, or a little bit after that. Okay, and that country has really come up. Hmm. I know for a fact after traveling South there, Korea, specifically. South Korea. I'm yeah. sorry, I'm not talking about North. Um, South Korea came up. So he said that his parents, who probably grew up in the 50s and 60s, properly legit lived in villages in in poverty. and the country has come out of that to become this world leader in terms of both soft power and hard power soft power is all this like entertainment mm. vagera yeah. culture food hard power is like money yeah. samsung and hyundai all these like big brands are coming out of it